Hey gang, and welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, I'm happy you're watching this video. If you read the title and thought maybe it's a bit simple of a concept, a thing to watch a whole video on, I promise you this is one of those little big videos. The terminology and things we're gonna discuss in here, while it's not like mind-blowingly you know, complicated, uh, this is one of the important ones, one of those foundational things where you nail down some terminology that you use, not just in OCHEM 1, but in organic chemistry too. So it's one of those, you know, good skills to get done right off the bat. In this video, we're not gonna do anything, you know, crazy, but we're gonna be able to answer effectively this question. How substituted is this blank? I promise you it's a question you're gonna be asked over and over again in various scenarios. So in this particular situation that I have on the board, this is gonna be how substituted is this carbon? Now, what does this keyword, you know, substituted exactly mean? When someone is usually asking you this in organic chemistry, because it can mean different things, but for right now, it means how many other carbons is the carbon that you're interested in attached to? So going from left to right over here, let's just look at each of these green starred carbons. So if I wanna answer the question, how substituted is this carbon? Well, it's only attached to four hydrogens, not any other carbons. So to answer that question of how substituted is the carbon, I would say that this is a methyl carbon. Methyl because it's all by its lonesome. It's not attached to any other carbons. Moving over here, right? Now this green uh, starred carbon, it's attached to one other carbon, right? We only see that this one right here has one neighbor carbon. So because it only has one, I can see that this is a primary carbon, the, the you know green starred carbon. So you can either write primary out or a very popular shorthand is to do the number, write one and a little degree symbol, okay? So then I think you can see a pattern moving over here. This green starred carbon is attached to two carbons in total, right? One on the left, one on the right. So we can call this a secondary carbon. So you can either, again, write that out or you can do the little two with a degree symbol. Now over here, we see this green starred carbon has one, two, three carbons that it's attached to. You can refer to a carbon like this as tertiary. Again, also doing the three degree symbol. And then last but not least over here, we have one, two, three, four carbons that that green starred carbon is attached to. So you can call this quaternary and do a little four degree symbol, okay? You will be asked this question a shocking amount in your organic chemistry career. So it's one of those things where please just feel comfortable with this terminology, put in the few minutes to feel good about it. So what I wanna do for the rest of the video is wipe this up, throw up a random structure, a bigger, just completely carbon, hydrogen, hydrocarbon structure. And I just wanna go through and go count the number of primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary carbons in it, and then also wrap functional groups in at the end, but not too much longer in this video. Let me clean this up, be right back. Okay, gang, so taking what we learned and applying it to a real example, let's just say someone hands you a structure. In this case, we just have a fully saturated hydrocarbon, meaning it's just carbon, carbon, single bonds, and then those carbons have CH, you know, carbon, hydrogen, single bonds as well. If we take a look at this and your task at hand, if someone asks you to take this structure and then count the, all the different number of carbon types, and by that, what I mean, that's not really an official phrase. Someone might just ask you, give me the total number of primary carbons in the structure, give me the total number of secondary carbons, tertiary carbons, quaternary carbons, right? There may be zero, there may be a number greater than zero, and it's our task to look and do the carbon math in terms of figuring out how many, you know, look at a carbon and determine how many carbons is that carbon attached to. So let's start with the primary carbons. Now remember, primary carbons are carbons themselves that are only attached to one other carbon. So if, for example, you look at this carbon right here, this is a terminal carbon. It's on the end of a structure. As a result, because it's on the end, that means it only has one bond 
to one other carbon. So this is a primary carbon. You can see up here, this is a primary carbon. So is this, 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 and this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That means we have six primary carbons in this structure right here. If we move on to secondary carbons, remember that means a particular carbon is bonded to two other carbons. So if I look at this carbon right here, I can see there's one carbon on one of its sides and another on another side. So I'll put a little circle around that carbon. So that's a secondary carbon, not a secondary carbon, not a secondary carbon, but this is a secondary carbon, not a secondary carbon, but this is also a secondary carbon because, right, one, two. So total, that means we have three secondary carbons, tertiary carbons. If we scan this structure, we're looking for carbons that are attached to three other carbons, right? So if we take a look at this carbon right here, it is attached to one, two, three other carbons. So I'm gonna put a little box around that carbon. I'm using different kind of like symbols to label them. And if we take a look at this carbon right here, it is also attached to one, two, three other carbons. So I'll put a box around there. So that means we have two tertiary carbons in this structure. And then last but not least, right? How many quaternary carbons do we have? Well, we've actually labeled all of the other carbons, but if you take a look up here, this carbon right here, which I'll put in a diamond, one, two, three, four carbons that it itself is attached to. So we only have one quaternary carbon here. Now, maybe you thought to yourself at your computer, well, Joe, why didn't you list out if there were any methyl carbons here? Think about this. I didn't do that because a methyl carbon by definition must not be attached to any other carbons. So if I'm drawing like a carbon structure, an organic structure, a, car a structure that contains carbon, unless it's one comprises of one carbon, there will be no methyl carbons, right? So we got zero. Okay, to close this video out, I'm gonna clean this up one more time and I wanna bring functional groups into the mix because you will hear people say, oh, that secondary alcohol or, or that primary amine or that methyl halide. So I just wanna make sure we also feel comfortable with those situations as well. We're almost done, gang. Stick with me. Let me clean this up. I'll be right back. Okay, gang, as we close this video out, the last stop I wanna make here is just taking all of this knowledge we've learned about being able to describe how substituted something is and apply it not to just regular old carbons, but to carbons that have functional groups attached to them. So now the question is slightly different. It's how substituted is this functional group, which you'll see what I mean. If we take a look at this structure right here, you can see we have two carbons and a Cl. You'll know this soon in this section once you do common naming, but this is ethyl chloride, right? But sometimes you just more specifically want to talk about, you know, how substituted the carbon that is, you know, the carbon that is attached to your functional group. So what you, you can also say about this structure, if someone asks you about it, is you could say that this carbon, which is only attached to one other carbon, you could say that not only is this a primary carbon, but you could talk more about the functional group it's attached to by saying this is a primary chloride or that the chloride is attached to a primary carbon. If you even wanted to be more generic, you could call this a primary halide because, you know, when you have a halogen attached to a carbon, it becomes a halide. Just other ways, you know, you, you want to be more specific or more vague, more general. Moving over here, we can see we have an alcohol functional group. And this particular alcohol is attached to a carbon that itself is attached to three other carbons. So again, we know this is a tertiary carbon, but we could also say that this is a tertiary alcohol. And again, I'm using right like the one degree, three degree sim, you know, term like symbol, but you could also write out primary and you could write out tertiary. Moving down over here, this is for the Breaking Bad fans. This is just one carbon attached to an NH2. So the functional group here is an amine. 
And since the amine is attached to a carbon that itself is not attached to any other carbons, this is methyl amine. Or you could say it's a methyl amine, right? Methyl amine is the name of the structure, but you could also, you know, it kind of points to like how substituted the amine is. And last but not least over here, alcohol is making a double appearance the carbon it is attached to is attached to two other carbons itself. So we could call this a secondary alcohol if we want to speak to just this region of the structure. Okay, gang, I'm sure you are sick of answering questions regarding how substituted something is. However, please, please, please feel comfortable with this terminology. It's one of those things where it's lingo that just comes up once you're learning more advanced organic concepts and if you're shaky on it, it what if you're learning something new and that's kind of like sounding like mumbo jumbo, then it's kind of like you have just a whole mountain of mumbo jumbo hitting your ears and it's very confusing. So just take this one to heart is what I'm trying to say. Whew. If you are watching me from YouTube, welcome. Thanks for watching uh, and being a Joe chemist. I also have a website jochem.io where you can see these same lovely videos and there are guided worksheets that I've created with PDF solutions all for free. And there's even videos of me doing the dang worksheets all for free with study guides to boot. If you're watching me on Jochem, you're a rock star. Thanks for being a Joe chemist. And no matter what, I will see you all in the next video.